Good evening, residents of the town of Sunderland. This is a scheduled meeting. I don't know if we're regular, but we are scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. We have, we started with one thing on the agenda, but we have two things now on the agenda. I think we can handle it on short order, but uh, it's not going to be a long. Chris, has no, Chris hasn't had his dinner. We want to make sure the guy behind the, uh, the TV camera is not famished from a day without food. So first order is we need to schedule a special town meeting. You would say out there, why do we need to schedule a special town meeting? Mr. Bergeron, do you want to tell us why we need to schedule a special town meeting? Sure, if I could, Mr. Chair, and thank you. So as you know, we've been working the last couple of years after the annual town meeting, the acquisition of the 120 North Main Street project. And in that acquisition, uh, the board was authorized to purchase for the purpose of, this is kind of like the Cliff Notes version, for the purpose of. Then the board went, the town meeting approved, narrowly but approved, the acquisition of the property for the intent of uh, senior and senior middle income housing. Pretty straightforward. The board of selectmen assembled, appointed a working group called the 120 North main feasibility i want that acronym somewhere it's, it makes a great <laughs> license plate anyway and that group has worked now for uh, uh almost two full years uh, very um diverse and interested and motivated group uh to determine a if it's even feasible to put senior slash middle income senior housing on that parcel how much of that parcel is usable concepts around that parcel, what could and could it look like, could and couldn't it look like. Uh, early on we worked with the Berkshire Design Group, we worked with um, oh, yes. LDS, yep, and they did the economic feasibility study, mashed those two things together through a series of grant rounds. We've now worked with the COG uh, housing and planning as well as procurement and it's all come together in the form of an RFP to go out for design slash build requisitions for proposals. We've noticed in the, dis we came up out of the discussion that the RFP can be encumbered, can be encumbering to participants because there was no language for the disposition of the property. So our original warrant article allowed us to purchase for the purpose of it did not give us a mechanism, according to town council, the power to the board of selectmen to dispose of the property, even if it was an RFP process. The tension comes now, not having that mechanism, we could limit our number of interested parties because you could accept the RFPs, go through a criteria, maybe accept. I think it's important to bear in mind that's a separate discussion. And then the developers would say, well, now, how do we get the property? And then it's another town meeting vote. So we have a challenge in front of us and the consensus of the working group was it would be better to bring that disposition article to special town meeting prior to the release of the RFP. Now, if I could just for a minute about the RFP, just because we're putting an RFP together through a whole bunch of work, through the COG, through the working group, doesn't mean we have to accept any of them. There's an entire criteria before any steps are made to bring back to the board before anything can be done with the property. We have kind of a cart and a horse right now. The horse is pushing the cart a little bit, and it would be in a perfect world pulling the cart a little bit. And that's what we're looking to do right now. Go ahead, Lauren. That we feel that um, it's in the town's best interest to get the most and best proposals that we can. Because we are, and we are actually, the RFP requires quite a lot of the proposers. They have to do a certain amount of work, um, actually a considerable amount of work, in order to put their proposal together, financial work, some pre-design work, so that when those proposals come back into the town, we have something really substantial to um, review. And so I think the consensus is that if we then make that contingent upon in other words, if, if we accept those proposals, but we don't actually have the authority to award that contract and move ahead, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. So, I'm going to try to um, 
in in the world of uh, government, we we throw these things out RFPs and RFQs and RFIs and RF something. Okay, and 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 to kind of make it and to simplify it, an RFP is a request for proposals. So so what the town what the town is going to do right now? An analogy would be like when we designed our Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. When we designed the, the Veterans Memorial, we put out an RFP, and that RFP asked designers um, to put together a plan. And first, we didn't have a model. We didn't have a model, but we had a plan in writing of what they wanted to do, and kind of we had some conceptual drawings of what what it would look like, and then. Just like with this, the 120 North Main Street, what we're doing is we're defining for the RFP the parcel of land. It meets it, what they call its meets and bounds, so that we know where it is. We're also going to identify uh, what the Conservation Commission has identified as its wetlands or areas of concern. And David used to do that when he was a member of the conservation. Knowing that the Town of Sunderland conservation bylaws are slightly more strict, more restrictive than the states, that's worked us, served us well. So in our, RF, in our RFP, we're saying that um, to make it happen, we're going to have to try to abide by the, the Sunderland's determination of wetlands to make it fall within that. Um, we're not telling the architect or our um, group yeah. what they're going to look like. We're not telling them what the color paint is going to be on the outside. We're not telling them um, that they're one story or two story. We're, we're making suggestions. Well, we are kind of, um, we are saying that from the feasibility that we went through, that we looked at a number of different options, and this is the option that the committee felt worked the best, and that the intention is to do something along these lines. You know, there is some leeway, and that right now is a one, a single two-story building. Exactly. So. Um, but we are we are making suggestion yes. that when to to meet. Uh, to, to have the greatest impact for our town, which is the let's let's get something to revisit what we voted two years ago. Two years ago, we said Sunland wanted has identified housing mm -hmm. as a major concern. Um, we're approaching our 300th anniversary, and um, we have never we have never addressed this issue head on in this manner before. So it's something a little new to us. But it's been identified. It, it does. It's it's always been there. We just haven't addressed it. So we are trying to address it. So bottom line is that the RFP goes out. Everybody can review the RFP. If if and, and we will talk more about the RFP at the special Absolutely. town meeting. Yeah. Um, and then and then the 120 North Main Street Committee will hopefully have a number of responses to that RFP, um, and they will choose whichever. Um, plan close closely <coughs> resembles what the RFP says, and they will forward that to the board of selectmen. So, and so, I would say that we have a number of options. Um, we can talk at and, and residents of town still have the options to to have a say <coughs> in the in the conversation. The other thing is with the with the the RFP is. Is that and, and maybe the sometimes what the town is doing through the CPA, the, the purchase in the land, is the town is saying, look, for the next 10 years or however long the bond is, that's our contribution to the project. So we're actually actually leveraging the $243,000 purchase price into potentially a $2 million project. And this is very common for when cities and towns want to encourage affordable or elderly housing to make that there's a municipal contribution to make that happen because these are basically done usually by nonprofit groups 
the kind of mark, you know, it's not a big, it's not a big money maker. It's it's really to get it done. No, this is. I mean, we're not. If, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> if you think about it, we're using ten percent. We're using, we're, we're putting down a ten percent deposit to get ninety percent. That's 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 our goal of using CPA. I believe that's how CPA money should be. It should be used as a leverage. So I'm I'm real happy with that. In other towns in our area, you've seen either old school buildings, old municipal buildings that have gone through conversions, and it's very it's much the same process. Yep. We happen to have a purchase, and our debt schedule of about 10 years remaining is essentially that contribution. It doesn't change. No. Perfect. Okay. David, anything? Nope. No questions. All right. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bergeron, what kind of motion you want to put <clears throat> forward? Oh, well, Mr. Chair, if I could add one more piece to the discussion. This is set against the backdrop of our the town of Sunderland's uh, approved housing production plan as well. So they're aligned quite well. Mm -hmm. Demographics been identified, parcel in town with utilities and transportation has been identified. Now we're kind of into that, can it actually pass the can it be done phase? And we're about to enter into, can we actually be built there? So. If I could just close it with that. So, Mr. Chair, if I could make the request that we call, we announce today for a special town meeting 14, 18 business days from now. We need to be able to sign the warrant with four days. We need to have it posted for 14, correct? Um, the soonest you could have it would be the 20th, and that is if you sign it on the 6th because we have a holiday on oh, the yeah. 5th. So, the 20th would be Tuesday. That would, and we've spoken with the school, the buildings are available, spoke with the moderator, the moderator is available. This would be a one article warrant. Okay. So call it on which date? 20th? Is That's it a, a Monday? Tuesday. 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 <clears throat> could, Mr. Chair, make a motion to announce to the town. A special town meeting uh, September 20th that would be at the elementary school at 7 o'clock uh, okay. second uh, when we open the warrant and when's the warrant going to be closed so if we open it you're calling it tonight it has to be open for seven days mm -hmm. so let's see that would be one two the sixth. So, the second motion to open a special town meeting warrant after this vote. Definitely. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a motion to uh, set the special town meeting date as September twentieth, yep. seven p.m. at the Sunland Elementary, and also to open the warrant mm -hmm. on tonight and, and close, close on the it 6th. on September sixth. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Well, you said you, well, before mm -hmm. I vote, mm -hmm. you said you checked with the town the moderator. Did you also check with the town clerk? I already did. Yep. <laughs> That's okay, right? Yeah. Oh, Since we know it is her it is her meeting. We kind of need the town clerk. We kind of need the town clerk at that meeting, right? Yeah. Great point. Okay. So the town clerk's okay? Town clerk's okay and the school's available. All right. So we will say aye. So we have a 3-0 vote on that. What else we have to do there, Mr. David? We have to um, have to make a motion to authorize the chair of the board to sign our pilot agreement so we can kick the start building. Uh, start right, right. Kick the whole process off and get it rolling. Wait a minute. Actually, going to sign something that says uh, the solar can get going? Yep. Finally. That's a good run. Right it is. It good is. work for everybody who participated in that. Despite certain roadblocks. It is so we're we still moving forwards. Second. Yep. A motion made and second for the chair to sign the uh, pilot agreement with Care Sarge. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The last thing, um, I just want every, to, to remind everyone that as we are fast approaching Labor Day, that it's also the start of school. Um, Next things Wednesday. Are gonna be, things are going to be changing. School buses are going to be out. Uh, children are going to be riding their bikes to school. They're going to be waiting for the bus. Moms and dads 
are going to uh, have that first day of school for their kindergartners. They're all going to have tears in their eyes. They may not be seeing, because they're sentimental, not like the guys on this committee. Yeah. Um, but they'll have tears in their eyes. They may not be uh, paying attention as close mm -hmm. as possible. So I do ask everyone, if you do hear the, this voice, um, or the, that you do be cautious um, because school is starting and those big yellow buses with the red lights will start rolling. Um, and we haven't seen them for a couple of months and we may forget that if we see those lights flash and we are not to pass, we are to stop. So um, to those that are entering their senior year, I hope this is the best year of your life. And those that enter kindergarten and first grade, um, the joys of education and school are, are about to begin. And um, it's, hopefully it's a lifelong journey and it doesn't stop at uh, 12th grade. So congratulations all. Just be careful. David, anything? No, I think I'm good. Scotty? Uh, lastly, lastly uh, Mr. Chair, late last week, uh, Jerry Snicker passed away, South Main Street resident, second generation, hmm. longtime participant in the library, very, very active up and down South Main Street. Anybody who's been up and down those areas knows his, um, his parents planted the maple trees that are the 80-footers from behind all of Hubbard's hut place to behind my house as an initial oh. boundary when that was being split up. Oh. So if we could it's just bad. have a remembrance for Jerry, he died suddenly at home uh, and had frankly had a good run. So. Very good run. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bergeron. All right, without uh, sharing anything else. That's it. Today also is the first day for our, our new chief of police, um, right. Eric De Metropolis. Um, if you have the uh, inclination to go down to talk to the new chief, um, by all means, please go down and talk to him. And at the same time, I would just like to take one moment to thank uh, the officers uh, in our department um, in, for the work that they have done, in particular that of Brendan Lyons, who's done a, an outstanding job over almost six months now uh, since Jeff's left. Um, Brendan has done a wonderful job. His, the, the men and women of the department have stepped to the plate and they've, they've done yeoman's work, keeping the place running. The morale has been fine um, and they've been working single on a singular purpose. So I just want to thank them for, for everything that, that they have done. Um, and we'll ask uh, Sherry to get a list from the chief so that we can actually appoint him once more because right. we are waiting for it because only a chief can can appoint yeah, can, exactly. can make a recommendation for appointing so we do we'll, sure. hopefully we'll be bringing that together next meeting um, if, I, if but, I could mr. chair that showed real flexibility from the members of the department recognizing that although contractually which are the rules of employment they've worked appointed kind of so I, I applaud them for, for that flexibility. All right. I think that's it. Yep. Anything else? Davey? No. Sherry? We're good. Okay. All those in I, one other motion. You want a motion to yep. adjourn? Second. We have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, we have a 3-0 vote, and we will be out at 630.